slightly better. <laughs> and recording. All right, all right. What's good? What, Mark, I take it you moved into a mansion after you sold all that shit paper that, that you had. You're in the backyard there. <laughs> I got a house with mountain views now, man. It's awesome. <laughs> that is. I got mountain views behind me over here. But <laughs> that's because you're, every time that's I look crazy. at your fucking your Facebook, your granola, you're some hiking somewhere. You're as bad as Veronica. I know. Just, hiking is so much fun. Hey, God, hey, God, God forbid we go out and do something for ourselves, guys. Yeah. yeah. Hey, those hiking photos you had, Veronica, were awesome, man. Those are super cool. Literally right off the road, too. Like, that didn't take any really? time to do. Yeah. Just up look, in season. Look, Photoshop. How far out of the valley was that? What? How far out of the valley was that? Just north of Payson, like five minutes oh, north yeah. of Payson. Yeah. Okay. Right on. This is one gorgeous state, that's for damn sure. And that's the, the one thing I love about it is like you can just literally experience so much in just this one state. It's unbelievable. I mean, I still don't have a beach, but. Yeah, four hours from it. I mean, go to Mexico. <laughs> it's true. Part of your ass off down there in Rocky Point. Which I do. <laughs> <So. laughs> All right, so uh, <clears throat> what, uh, I know it's been a while since we got together. Mainly because, well, this is my dream with PTSD. Just sit at home and ignore fucking stupid people all day. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and now the whole world's figured it out and they fucked my shit up. I know. <laughs> the, introverts, the introverts and the psychopaths have finally won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'd like to let each of you know that I put chonies on for this. It's a special occasion. Nice, nice. Because I did not. Oh, all right. Teabag has gone uh, free ball in this time. Because yep, yep. <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> free ball. <laughs> and Mark's never worn underwear, so, you know, he's already got you guys. <laughs> I think Mark how wears, does, I think Mark wears does, the one of the opposite kind. You know what I mean? He, he pushes. How does Veronica limits. know that? That's what I want to know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mark's That's like the only thing I got in my drawer is banana hammocks, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you, said uh, hammocks. That's you said banana hammocks. That's plural. That means there's more than just you in there, you weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, oh, shit. Let's, uh, I say we start with the obvious, which is uh, Mark, who has been quarantined with a new bride, new children. And very little pets. Uh, shall we ask, are you still in holy bliss of matrimony? Um, well, you know who we are. <laughs> and uh, this shit don't go away just because an event in your life happens. And so, yeah, I've had some, I've had some hard times. I'll just come right out with that. Well, you, and, no, uh, now you might have had hard times, but what about... Your family. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They've, um, I, I talked about it on one episode before the world came to an end um, <laughs> a couple of months ago. But, um, yeah, overall, I think things are, are really going pretty well, man. Honestly. That's a testimony to them and their tolerance, not anything I can do or hold together. How'd you I sleep? Think... How's your sleep, Mark? Uh, not good, but you know, almost normal. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. You still got your warm milk at the side of the bed there? Uh, no, I don't warm it up. I'm not a two year old, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I, I try to make it sound manly. Can I get, yeah. some, can I get a glass <laughs> of warm milk? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying to man it up. Like, give me a, give me a glass of milk. <laughs> but put it in a dirty glass. Ooh. <laughs> wow, that's no, living okay. on the edge. No, give it to me, IV like propofol. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so uh, being at home, I know last time this didn't make it on the last podcast, but you were triggered by some uh, n not brilliant uh, hiring methods for roofers. What? what oh my god, dude. What triggers what triggers Mark in quarantine? <laughs> uh, well, 
I mean, I had a lot of stuff going on, so I was trying to rehab that house, um, trying to sell my wife's house, because we got in a contract on this thing, you know, back when times were normal and there was a real estate boom, as uh, V can attest to. And, um, you know, we expected to buy this. We snapped it up quick because they were going quick. And, um, and we thought, well, we'll sell her house like within a week, maybe a couple weeks. <laughs> uh -oh. So How'd that work out for you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm paying two mortgages. <laughs> and we ain't got crap for um, activity over there. I mean, you got a lot of stuff on Zillow, but who cares about that? That's not real world. That's just a bunch of people that got tired of looking at porn. So they thought they looked at real estate. <laughs> Yeah. Well, apparently so, you didn't go with the Butler team because had you gone with the Butler team, <laughs> the house had been sold already. Yeah. I'm you still stuck on I the porn comment. The <laughs> I didn't go with the Butler team because it's way the hell over in the east, east, east side. I would have traveled for you. Wait, what? Hey, are you the way out on the west side, Mark? He's way yeah, out. Yeah, we're, we're on like 35th Avenue and... Um, 35th Avenue and Union Hills is where her old house is at. Hey, now I'm, up on, I'm on 59th and uh, Joe Max. That's um, that's inspiration. No, not inspiration. That's a uh, Pinnacle Vista Peak behind me. I don't know if you can see that that far away, but hey, were you just gonna call that inspirational point, like from Happy Days? <laughs> <laughs> what inspirational the fuck? This Way to go, fuck on. Monty. Monday, yeah, Tuesday, man, that's going Holy shit. No, right. the, the mountain on the other side that I'm looking at is Inspiration Point. The one behind me is Pinnacle Vista. So, all right. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so I'm kind of freaking out about the dual mortgage thing right now. Um, I was busting my ass rehabbing her house, getting it ready for marketing, um, changed out flooring, painted the entire interior doorknobs, uh, faucets, vanities, all kinds of shit is wow. killing me. Damn. It's a nice looking house, but there's just no, nobody pulling the trigger on properties right now. Yeah. Unless you're with Team Butler. Yeah, if you would have went with Team Butler, that shit would have been sold in a couple of days. <laughs> These really over here just like, pa 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 pa. <laughs> hey, so in, uh, for, for, uh, for a reality check for me, how is things going? Are you seeing a slowdown at all in real estate due to this virus crap? Um, no, I have seen like mortgages and stuff kind of um, changing the process of getting difficult to qualify for. Yeah, it's a little harder for people. Um, yeah. But but homes, I mean, I mean, it's a seller's market because homes are still very sparse compared to the amount of buyers out there. So. Huh. Well, are people still like viewing homes? Mm -hmm. A lot of people are doing like virtual stuff, but people are still having to move, so they still have to buy to get there. Yeah, that's true. So uh, overall, Mark, you're doing uh, normal. It sounds like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I've been up, in flowing. I was up last night at midnight, and stayed up till I don't know, two or two thirty, I guess slept for another half hour or so and then just gave up on it so yeah normal hmm. right on that sounds right. Um, so uh if you uh follow us and watch us or you stock teabag on instagram or facebook <laughs> you know that he no longer has ptsd because he's always in the wilderness where no one is <laughs> and i like to call it social distancing yeah hey Hey, you know what? You know what? Another one of my triggers was so the dispatcher that um, the dispatcher that handled my uh, officer involved shooting, she started a podcast. It's just nine one one operators, and it's called the voices in our heads. You know, meaning in their in their headset. You know. Yeah. And I listened to her podcast, and um, she invited me on, and um, her podcast did a shout out to ours and a link on Facebook and stuff. And um, yeah, so that was a bad day too because she interviewed me like late at night and I went through the whole shooting story and all that. And uh, Oh man. 
so yeah and my wife was there and she she listened to it all and she was all she was jacked up from it and that was the first time your wife heard the story from start to finish no i mean i told it to her obviously but um when when you're talking to somebody about it trying to give them all the details there's a lot of stuff in there that she didn't hear or she just read in the book you know what i mean yeah and to hear me verbalize it um right from me and to see me choking up and breaking down and all that stuff from it it was it was really disturbing to her and um so yeah that's pretty rough did you tell her imagine like, going through it yeah and she said that she's like you know i read your book she said but when you tell that story she said i'm scared shitless she's like you put me right in that hallway and i can imagine that guy's face and all that stuff so that was like an extra three days of extreme roughness um for my symptoms and all that stuff um yeah. terrible appetite horrible sleep um even by our standards so, Damn. yeah well i'm glad that you made it to the to the podcast yeah man me too and, I'm not uh, seriously pissed off. I don't have a cigar to smoke with you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and so, no, uh, no comment on my types of cigars. <laughs> so, uh, teabag there. You have you have found every secret place in the world to run away from everything. I wouldn't and, call it running away. <laughs> so how how is how is quarantine? Obviously, you pay no attention to it because you just go everywhere. But how are you, are you managing your triggers in quarantine? I see you, do you got roommates? Cause I, I looked and I saw a couple of dudes hanging out. I don't yeah. want to get into your personal sex life. I'm just saying, are they <laughs> roommates or homies or what? They my boys. Uh, no, uh, no, I, I do have a roommate, yes. Um, so <clears throat> it's going really well actually. Um, I'm actually, you know, still working and stuff um, Monday through Friday, so. Um, we're off on Wednesdays and Saturday, Sunday, obviously. So those are the days that I've been utilizing for hiking and going outside and stuff. Um, it's better. Um, I don't know. It's my, in my mind, it's better outside social distancing. Um, you know, literally away from everyone, um, getting nature in than kind of just sitting inside, letting all the virus and shit just sit, you know, I just, <laughs> To me, with it blowing around and stuff, it's a lot more healthy, you know, to be outside and getting getting dirty out there. Any triggers? How's your sleep? My sleep's been fucking amazing. Um, <laughs> uh, unf I, I apologize, Mark. I really do. I really do feel <laughs> bad. Um, Go ahead and kick, no, him a little, kick him a little harder. Kick him a little harder. No, but no, that's kind yeah. of the thing is, like, I've been hiking so much, and um, I uh, one of my friends has a uh, – a gym in her garage so we've been working out and um so kind of you know I've, i haven't really slacked on the fitness or anything like that so i'm still tiring myself out and getting my routine going so um it's been kind of normal normal for me but um it's weird hearing all my family and stuff really freaking out at home and you know and and really like my grandma had a lungectomy um about shit three four months ago something like that and um she's really struggling with the fact that she has to stay inside and wear a mask when she goes out and you know, that type of stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think if we just fucking keep it that way, we'll be good for the time being. I will yeah. let you know teabag that, uh, I have not followed anything from Tuesdays with teabag. <laughs> <laughs> the end of it. <laughs> Same. <laughs> we, we hit a stall point there. <laughs> Oh yeah, we like ran right into that. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I do very uh, limited mobility for uh, hours to days on end. <laughs> got, any, got any back pain? Uh, no, not at all. Because <laughs> I'm not using my back to do anything. <laughs> You're like, I'm not doing a damn. I don't. Yeah. My day. My day consists of uh, well, coffee. There you go. Uh, and then uh, a second cup of coffee followed by a briefing from uh, my new hero, Andrew Como, because he just calls it like it is, you know? Uh, I'm not a, into politics. I just, I, the dude just fucking calls it straight. 
And then uh, I consider taking a shower around noon. <laughs> yeah. Nasty ass. That's yeah, usually that's, that's usually considering. <laughs> well, we yeah, don't have to take your choni, so. Yeah, it, no choni is right. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, and, and then somewhere in between that time, I will make myself something to eat, or I'll have breakfast, or whatever. And then by that time, it's time for the second briefing. Uh, and then I watch that briefing. And then, uh, well, then I go outside and I smoke a cigar and I have a drink. Jesus. <laughs> You're like See, life. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, Manny's over here just fucking living the dream. <laughs> Right. The government put us in quarantine. What I mean, why <laughs> you got why it fucking harder than it has to be? <laughs> oh shit! The government. Right there, yeah. right there to the government. The government also got us into a whole bunch of different shit. So. Right, we're all fucked up because of. Well, uh, look, and this is this is what I figured out. Unless our government is in cahoots with every other government in the world, everyone's got it. Hey, there's five people that own the world anyway, so they control it. Yeah. Yeah. That's not me either. Yeah. Yeah, it ain't, it ain't me. I'm yeah. very far from that. So And aside from the shit of uh reality of death and 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 the the unemployed and shit, uh you know, I spend a lot of time with my family now, and as you guys know, that's something that we didn't do as cops, right? So this has actually been a time where I was forced to have to uh, be with my family in a way, and I, and I don't have anywhere to go to hide, right? Like I, I can't say I got to go to work or yeah. Uh, so like yeah. Mark, and then, like Mark said, like you, they, they're stuck with you there. Yeah, you're ringing a bell. That sounds to me, buddy, because there's been some tense times, and I'm like, well, I'm just gonna go to the bar. Oh no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not that's going right anywhere you know and i'm gonna do i'm gonna spread my wings and go to the bathroom yeah <laughs> and hide in there like a troll i'm gonna go to my room and shut the door yeah <laughs> if, if you're really if you're really on a sideways motion they're hoping they get corona so they get the 14 day boot out to the fucking garage or some shit man you have no fucking idea how much i've been wanting a fever <laughs> yeah. like i got cord yeah and uh it's like well like mark you know you you fucking you i'm gonna go drink and then you sit down and you think this motherfucker was here yesterday with me when I was drinking. <laughs> and so that's like that's my day and and realistically i i mean i get triggered but not i don't think as bad but uh, then you've got along the way you've got anniversaries that that come with our uh, PTSD and whatnot, and so this would have been this month would have been my twentieth anniversary on the police department. The goal that I oh, set out, the the goal that I set out to to make uh, will have occurred on May fifth. So I so now you're stuck at home trying to figure out. Uh, 20 years ago when I started, you know, never would I have thought that 20 years later, there'd be a fucking virus that shut the world down. And I wasn't out there with the rest of those guys uh, on the front lines. Yeah. So, so uh, Manny, you started, you started your career on Cinco de Mayo. Brown and proud, brother, brown and proud. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that is fucking that's a, that's awesome that's a true independence day for you bro <laughs> yeah there was quite a bit of mexicans in my graduating class too now that i think about it i wonder if that was planned <laughs> <laughs> oh he just dropped off why oh uh, he's got uh interference so <laughs> man he's got some interference running on his on his network over there no dude the barfly showed up. I'm out here doing my podcast, but the same barfly that was here yesterday showed up. <laughs> uh, that's funny. So is that the girl? Is that the girl whose underwear you're wearing right now? <laughs> if you'd have paid attention to the first time, I don't wear them. <laughs> Not during quarantine. So, uh, so yeah. So that's so that's kind of mine. So now, Veronica. Yes. You as always 
have figured out a way and managed to find a way to continue to run out your PTSD. <laughs> How, so, so explain to us what you've done in this quarantine to try to address your <laughs> PTSD. Address? Um, I still, I'm, I'm still working. Um, a lot of it's from home now, but um, I am still working. I still go to appointments on occasion and things like that. Um, and we started hiking, so we've been out exploring, which is amazing. Like something I wish I had done a long time ago. And then otherwise, I'm just home like all day. And it, it is like the most comfortable place to be. Was that before? Was it that was home the most comfortable place before? You know, um, I don't, I think, so there was a moment a few weeks ago, all of my um, girlfriends and stuff, like we started doing this house party thing and like we drink and hang out on our phones basically, but kind of like Zoom, you can see everybody and stuff. And so did that a couple times. And then I, uh, I realized soon after that it just, I, I like to be alone. I don't need to be in all of that. So I, I slowly just started avoiding the invites and whatnot. And, and so some days I wake up and I'm like, I have no clue what day it is. I'm okay with that. Or I'm like, when is the last time I've actually left my house? Like I just, I'm, it's comfortable. And I didn't realize how, how much I had grown to appreciate isolating. So. Well, you're not really isolating though. You're out with your family, you're hiking and shit, right? Yeah, we do that once a week and I have my kid here, but I mean, like as far as being social, like pre PTSD, I was social all the time. I hosted parties weekly. Like I, we were oh, out. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you say you hosted parties weekly? Yes. Where the, where the fuck are we? I said pre PTSD. I didn't oh, know. You. Oh, okay. You didn't know us. That's right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So like, that was my thing. Like we, I that. went out, <laughs> I went out all the time. Like that was just something. I was very big into that. And so I didn't realize until like we had to be here and I paid attention to every now and then, like how often I don't communicate. There are days I don't talk to anybody except for who's in my house. And um, I didn't realize, you know, how often I did that until I'm like my mom calls and she's like, hey, can't you call us every now and then? And I'm like, damn, I don't even talk to my mom. Like I'm just fine just letting each day pass and being home alone. See, I can actually butt in and say that I totally agree with you 100%. <laughs> I, I feel so bad about my family being in Missouri, you know, and like, I really need to, like, call them, you know, like, update what I, what's going on and stuff, but I never do. I always am just like, hey, you know. You get that phone call, and then I'm like, oh, shoot, like, it really has been a week already, and I have Exactly, to it's like, oh. Anybody. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, and cooties are real. So I, even with my family, like I, if they, you know, we got this whole uh, underground network of trades that happen between like shit paper and toilet paper, and then somebody's got food and somebody makes food, but you can't touch them, so they leave like a Mad Max scene going on. Yeah, it's like like you're 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 feeding the homeless <laughs> uh, hobos that show up, and in return they leave you shit paper for like enchiladas or something. You know. What I mean? <laughs> But then you bring it home and you got to wipe it all down. And so I still, I go to the store for my family. So uh, my son, my 15 year old, he's obsessed with face masks. So now if I leave, he's like, do you got your, your face mask? Right. And then I go to the store and I see all these people with face masks and shit. And it's, it's something I've never seen. And, and not just me, the other day I was at Safeway and there was actually toilet paper in the aisle, okay? And the lady was looking at the toilet paper and then looking around. She's like, like oh, shit, did I find it? <laughs> do, I, do I take it? Like, is this legal? Is this, all, is this a trap? <laughs> so uh, It's a trap! Yeah, and it's weird. So I have loved Spam since I can remember. I love Spam and Eggs, Spam Musubi. It doesn't matter. Spam. I remember when a big thing of jelly came at the top of it to keep it fresh. Yeah. And, and <laughs> spam, spam, spam. Yeah. What? <laughs> it's, it's the Hawaiian state. <laughs> right. Sorry. Sorry. I just threw up. <laughs> and so, so when all this shit happened, there's no fucking spam. And I'm like, oh, now you can eat spam, right? Now that the world's <laughs> ending, you can eat fucking spam. 
it's because it stays good forever because there's so much fucking preservatives. Yeah, in it's it. good <laughs> shit, man. There's a, uh, there's a run on Twinkies too, man, because Twinkies <laughs> never expire. <laughs> and they're like 200 years old or something. Yeah, yeah. Still got that soft cream filling. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, then everyone, so before everybody was snotty and bought like the most ex- the 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 most expensive shit to put on social media to look like they're you know living the life and i go down this aisle one day to get water and all the fucking water's gone right but all the cheap water's gone and i want water so <laughs> the only water left is the expensive shit that's snotty so i get perrier right <laughs> Because there's no that's cheap the original, water. That's the original bottled water, by the way. Yeah. So, so now I'm hooked on Perrier. <laughs> <laughs> I like how that evolved. <laughs> it, it, you know, and a Mexican drinking Perrier is not uh, the normal sight. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I used to drink Topo Chico. You should be drinking Topo Chico. Yeah. So, and then the <laughs> shit's the best. Like weird shit just came up missing that you couldn't buy at, at the store. You know, like all of a sudden motherfuckers like vegetables. <laughs> like there were no fucking frozen vegetables in the freezer aisle at all. Yep. And all this, all the, all the bullshit stuff, like the good shit, like the pizza rolls and all that shit was still there. So I'd go to get veg- vegetables and I couldn't find it. I could find fucking pizza rolls and all that other shit. And I was like, this, people are weird. When shit hits the fan, people come up with weird shit and ideas to hoard stuff, you know? <laughs> I think we're all going to go to a community living situation at some point. Like a common? Yeah, I'm not, yeah that's yeah. what, I'm, I'm not a believer in any of this bullshit, man, at all. No, me either. I think it's completely overblown. Yeah. I, uh, when it's all said and done, it's going to be nothing more lethal than the seasonal flu that we have. That yeah, they're I, now attributing flu deaths to fucking COVID. I know, every, all deaths are attributed to it now. It's like yeah, the motherfucker out. dies of a heart attack and they're considering COVID-19. Everybody yeah. is. It's well, like, here's the thing. It's, it's, you can, money off of that. From the scientist that I was listening to on um, YouTube the other day, he's the one that did the, uh, um, the uh, I forget what county in California, but he did that study and he said, um, it's, well, we, we determined two things. It's way more contagious than we thought it was. And because of that, the number of deaths are the same. So it's much more survivable than we yep. thought. Exactly. It's two things. It's more contagious and it's more survivable. So we just, I, I, it pisses me off that the, the government has come in and just completely did an overreach and overstepped their bounds, sent us all home. You got 80% of America, or at least 70%, live in paycheck to paycheck. And these poor son of a bitches can't go out and do their job. So they're dependent on that check every seven days. Exactly. And when they haven't gotten it in the last four weeks, that's irreparable. That's yep. not coming back. Well, and I, I, find, it, I find it crazy. $100 that... isn't going to do jack shit for anybody in America. Yeah. Well, we, and the other thing is, is, I mean, us doing physicals on every fire department around this area, we, we talk to them and, and they're slow. They're like, we've, we don't really run yeah. calls. Like literally we're not running as much calls. We're not doing much yeah, at all. My, like, my it's, wife is a nurse and she's like, everybody in the ER can't even get 40 hours. Exactly. A month with about 40 hour a week. So I know Arizona, they say, oh, well, Arizona is a unique situation. Yeah, we are unique. We're like a Mecca for retirees. So we yep. got the, some of the yep. oldest population in the damn country. We should be having people killed by the millions here. Well, it's not, some it's not going to happen here because it's too fucking hot. Yeah, it's too warm. Well, it wasn't too hot two goddamn months ago. You're right. Yeah, so you're right. When the shit kicked off. Well, and, and when it really happened was like December and January anyway when yeah. most people got it. So. I yeah, know I I been, probably had it in December. No, I think I had it in January. I had it in January, February. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you all motherfuckers stay away from me then. Come here, give me a kiss, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> I had a headache for two days and a slight fever, and I was tired as shit. 
which are all unusual um, situations for me. Like I, even when I get the flu, yeah. I'm never really like that. And so I knew I had some, some sort of anom anomaly in this, in my health situation. And, but it wasn't on the news at that point. Yeah. And when it came, went, I was like, holy shit, I probably already had it. Cause her kids had it for a couple of days. They stayed home from school and um, yeah. That's well, probably and, nothing and more than what it is. It also blows my mind that, that are dying. It's like they may test positive for COVID, but they're also they could test positive for seasonal flu and they could test positive for common cold viruses on their body. But those viruses are just almost like an innocent bystander for the real reason of their cause of death, which was, oh, uh, you know, this guy had uh, emphysema and chronic pneumonia and all kinds of other shit. Exactly. And he was married. So you know what you died from? 90. That's what the hell you died from. <laughs> well, and it blows my mind, too, that it's like uh, the the strain has changed from Europe, China, and U.S. It's like, I mean, if it, it's unbelievable that this is an election year, that this is, is something that has spread across the globe so fast. Um, there's just too many things that have happened with this. I don't think the politics have anything to do with it, but... Those five people you mentioned early in the podcast about controlling the world, those that's kind true. of ambitions have got yeah. something to do with it. Yeah, no, that's and true. it would love to put us all on social welfare, where we're standing there each month with our hand out for a, a small chiclet of shit that we can't possibly survive on, so that they know where we're going to be in the next 30 days, back in that food line. Just waiting for our hand out, you know, begging here's, for it. Here's what I think. I think that the aliens got tired of our shit and infected the fucking world. You know what? They'd be smart. <laughs> so let's be honest. I mean, look at the world right now. The world is recovering in such a great fashion. Like it's unbelievable to see like the the ecosystem recovering like it is. Like unbelievable. You hear that? Yeah, that granola, man. It, 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 how do you become such a hippie out of Flint, fucking Michigan? I mean, out of Ferguson, out of, Missouri. Uh, sorry, Missouri, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, I appreciate you guys coming out and uh, touching base with everybody. I'm Mark. I'm glad that you're still uh, in holy matrimony out there. <laughs> and yeah, just a testimony to her not yeah me. and do me a favor send me send me what's the how, how do people find that podcast for dispatchers it's called uh 911 the voices in our head and um uh, it's uh you can actually see my um or hear listen to my uh my uh officer involved shooting on that thing she's going to have us come back um uh, and interview me on PTSD symptoms and um, we'll have more direct link to uh, our pistol podcast. Where do, uh, so where do dispatchers find it, I guess, is what I'm asking. Uh, you can find it on um, Apple Cast and Spotify. Okay. So I can get it out to the dispatchers that reach out to us. Yeah. Yeah, they'd love it, man. Two great dispatchers that host that thing, Stacy and um, uh, I can't think of the other girl's name right now. But, yeah, Stacy was my dispatcher. Fuck are you laughing at, T-Bag? Put me, put him on the spot to try and name that other lady's name. Back, I didn't, I didn't ask for Becky. the lady's name. I just asked, how do they find the podcast? Stacy and Becky, and it's on Spotify, and it's called Nine One One: The Voices in Our Head. It's all about dispatching. Nice. All right, I'll see if I can find it and add the link when I uh, upload this godforsaken podcast. Yeah, that'd be cool, man. Yeah. And send it to me, and I'll post it on our pages too. All right, so it's good to see you guys. I know. I can't wait till we can get back in person and do this. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, May. Uh, May. Yeah. May. May first, opening Our, up. That's when shit opens back up. When, when did that? When did that get announced? Hey, it's been announced, trust man. me <laughs> on this. You said you watch the news twice a day. <laughs> yeah, but they didn't say anything about fucking May first. May first. Yeah. Oh. And everything, the, everything's so, getting relaxed on May first, man. So, hey, so maybe we can go. We'll just all wear like a, a mask or something. <laughs> so the other thing, the other thing. Oh, that's cool mask made. Yeah, before we get out of here, the other thing. I so I I've been trying to learn photography. 
<laughs> and <laughs> so that so that's something else that is pushed me into doing shit that I didn't normally do. So I'm be, I'm trying to be taught photography with my 16 year old son. <laughs> and then it, there's all this fucking you got to turn knobs and shit and so but I think I take okay pictures so far so I'll I'll, uh, I'll send pictures to Veronica to try to post on on uh, Instagram or whatever hey, the fuck we're on. And since you mentioned that I do need new headshots for real estate so. When you're not quarantining anymore, hey. I could use a photographer. Really, guys? Fuck you all. Oh, are you a photographer, T-Bag? <laughs> really? Dude, I... <laughs> Dude, have you seen my fucking Instagram? Yeah, it's all full of fucking waterfalls and flowers and shit. I didn't know you took those pictures. I thought those, maybe... Those are, those are called photography. Well, yeah, but are you, did you use your iPhone, I, that cheap no, filter shit? No, I used my fucking Nikon 5500. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that means. I just know that it's good. <laughs> I, so, have too. I just don't know what it does because I don't do photography. <laughs> yeah. So, well, then I'll, I'll take us uh, the updated accelerated class through T-Bags Photography. <laughs> Anytime. Yeah. Okay. Well, as always, you guys, if you have your cups, <laughs> right? Clean. To us. Yeah, T-Bags Cup Brew. <laughs> and those like <laughs> us. You guys take it easy. Love and peace. See ya. See ya.